Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. In my sewing space, my serger and my sewing machine sit side by side, and I use them regularly in combination. Today, I have a really pretty blouse project for you, a little shell, a little lace shell, that really shines as far as showing the serger and the sewing machine in combination. So let me give you a few clues on how I got started with this. First of all, I wanted to pick just a very basic uh, tank pattern, um, just a tank, tank top and um, when you look for a pattern like that, you're gonna probably see a lot of them. It's, I've seen so many um, mixed in with other patterns, with other pieces. And you're very likely gonna find one that either has darts or doesn't have darts. So consider that when you're picking your pattern. Maybe you have a favorite you can um, use already. But a dart will always give you um, a better fit, especially for um, cup sizes that are a little bit larger. Now. I'm using one today that has no darts, but I'm gonna show you how to sew a dart in lace as well. So we'll get, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But I want you to think first of all about preparing your pattern. You're going to be serging this. Um, almost all the seams are entirely done on the serger and we're just finishing up on the sewing machine. So we don't have the allowance for fitting that we would normally have if we were doing everything at a sewing machine. The first thing I do with my pattern once I fine tune it is I trim all of the side seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch and I trim off the hem allowance leaving only a quarter of an inch. And I do that because you're gonna see the serger seam is almost exactly a quarter inch. So again, this is a little bit of a loose fitting garment. It's, it's made out of a woven, so we wanna be um, careful with that. At the neckline, we're gonna trim away all the seam allowance, and you'll see um, why we wanna do that as well. But, so it's important to fine tune the fit, customize your pattern, and um, once you do that, then you can use it again and again. So let's talk a little bit about the supplies. I've just got ordinary lace. Now you might find lace that has uh, a band at the bottom that actually has a scallop trim, or you might find lace that has no trim at all. You could also save that trim and, and just cut it with a straight edge. For serging it, we need to do that. But you would be able then to reuse this, so we'll talk about that too. You're gonna need um, just a silky, nice fabric to use as the, the lining, but we're actually not using lining fabric, we're using blouse fabric, because that little bit of sheen is gonna show through, and you're gonna see the right side of that fabric showing through the lace. We're also gonna need that fabric for binding, so I chose just a, just a polyester, um, lightweight satin blouse fabric, and it's, and it's perfect for this. All right, so I want to show you the, the very first step, and then we'll move over to the serger, and I'll go through all of the actual construction process. So the very first step, once we've cut out our pieces, is we're going to serge the side seams of the, the lace, and I'm just going to open that up. I'm going to lay it on the table there so just can, you can see that that seam, and the wonderful thing about this project is by using the serger and serging the seams on the lace, it gives almost an invisible look to the finished garment, because you're gonna see that seam through from the right side, but because it's surged, it's gonna blend right in, and it's gonna look beautiful. So I've taken my front and back piece of the lace, and I've surged those side seams. I've taken the front and back piece of my lining, which is my satiny blouse fabric, put um, both of those right sides together, serge that side seam, and I'm done with that. So that is my first step. I've actually got these numbered because I've got to stay in a certain order in order to show you. So I'm gonna grab these now. We're gonna move over to the serger. So again, I've got side seams already sewn. What I've done then is I've put the uh, pieces so that they are um, together and I've got my right sides face, my right side of my blouse fabric out and my right side of my lace against that, that lining. And I'm going to need to serge the armholes first. So if you look, you can see what I did is I, I basted that on the machine. Now, I could use pins, that would work, but I wanted to get this um, done a little bit easier here to demonstrate. So I went ahead and machine basted that. It's 
very easy to pull those stitches out when you're done, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to handle it. You might wanna do the same thing for all the construction steps. All right, so I've got my serger set up for a four thread stitch, and I'm just gonna serge right on the edge of that armhole. And don't worry, we'll tell you in the instructions all of the, what piece goes against the right side, what piece goes against the wrong side, what piece sews first, what piece sews second. It's gonna be a little bit, little bit tricky for you to keep track of all this all in one, all in one step here. And naturally, I want you to be able to see this, so I'm using gray thread on my white lace. You would wanna use white, but you can see that seam is all nice and finished, and again, the serger stitch is almost an exact quarter inch seam. Okay, so my piece number two is done and I'm ready to three. So what I've done with three is I've surged both of those armhole seams, okay? And I've um, now flipped this so that I can surge my shoulders, all right? So with my shoulders, I'm gonna be going with the blouse fabric wrong sides together and the lace fabric right sides together. Again, don't worry about keeping track of that. I'll have that all listed for you in the instructions. But it is important to follow that um, method of my madness because it'll all work out in the end. Again, I've basted it so that it's going to um, stay together and just make that a little bit easier. The other th um, good reason to base that is, and it's just a machine base, so just a long stitch, is because it keeps you from having too many pins when you're at the serger. Okay, so that one shoulder is done. And let's hurry up and do this second one. As you can see. Make sure when you're serging this that you get all the way to the edge. You can trim off just a little bit of those uh, scrappy edges, but make sure that you're fully, fully catching that seam so that when we turn to the right side, you could see that everything is, is caught in there. Okay, so that one is done. I'm ready for the next one. You could see my shoulders. I wanna show you this. My shoulders have been completely done. My armholes have been completely done. Everything is now facing the way it should face with the blouse fabric right side against the wrong side of the lace. So the right side of the lace is on the outside. And at this point, I'm gonna actually stitch my hem. Now, if you saved your scalloped edge, you could just stitch that over the top if you wanted to. But I'm gonna finish this all by putting this together on the edges reaching inside there, get this separated. It always wants to stick together. Okay, so just the way it's gonna need to be when it's laid out is the way I'm gonna grab it. I can grip that there. And then pull that through. And I'm just gonna show you how I do part of this hem. Okay, you wanna get your uh, side seams matched up. Let's reach in there and get those side seams together. This one I didn't baste, so you could see how basting or pinning would give you that little bit of easier handling. i get that underneath the foot. Okay. And again, make sure your edges are well matched as you're doing this. Take your time, I'm speeding up a little bit here for you, but you're gonna go all the way around so that that is gonna be completely, completely finished there. And again, your side seam should match there. You can skim that bottom edge just a little bit. I'm not gonna be too fussy about being too perfect here. Take this out, I'm not gonna finish it. I just want you to see how nice and neat that is. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna switch over to the sewing machine where we're gonna finish up. And then I can grab the one that I did. And you can see here, 
how that's all finished. And just look at, at the way that is that hem is completely stitched there, and you can't even see the, the seam allowance because that serger stitching just blends right in. Now, I took one more step after that, and I top stitched that. So I went along that edge, and then that just anchors that edge together. I also did that around the armhole. So those serge seams were just flipped to the inside, but by top stitching it, that gives it a really nice um, solid edge that's gonna stay put and it won't roll out on you. All right, the last step then is to bind the neckline with satin binding. So I have started this step by stitching the right side of the binding to the right side of the lace. I've stitched a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now I'm ready to turn that to the right side, or to turn it to the inside rather, to the inside of the, of the blouse. You can see again I basted, so you can see my purple stitches here, that would be all ripped out, um, taken out so that, that's, that's gone. And I've pressed that nice and smooth. Now on the wrong side I want you to see that there's excess. We could turn that under and we could top stitch from the right side or we could hand stitch that. So I promised to talk about the dart. Let me show you the dart. First of all, when you mark for a dart, you may want to consider, let's get this untangled here, putting a piece of tissue paper on there so that you're gonna be able to see it. And then you're gonna be able to sew right on that tissue paper, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and lower my presser foot and I'm gonna sew that dart real quick. And we're almost finished with this. Okay, remember with darts, you never wanna tie off that that um, end seam with a um, back stitch, you wanna hand tie that. So I've already done that on this side, okay? And the next thing I would do is I would simply trim that excess away, and if I want to, I could zigzag right along there and secure that. So it's as simple as that to make a lined lace top in no time at all.